वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्रीगणश्याम महाराज नी जय ऑल मैटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड अवर बिलउड गणश्याम महाराज पात में कठोर लिब्रेशन पूज्य पात गुरु जैन ऑल ऑफ ड्यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण टुडे सदगुरु ने स्कूलानंद स्वामी डिस्क्राइब डिस्क्राइब्स अ सम इंसिडेंट हैपन इन अ लाइफ ऑफ सम फीमेल ड्यूटीज ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण एज फ्रॉम मैनी since many last sundays we are discussing the same i mean the such incident that uh, that were happened in the life of such some female devotees of bhagwan swami narayan in the same way today sadguru niskuranand swami was describing the same kinds of incidents happen in the life of some female devotees in 149 chapter of bhakta chintamani In this chapter first uh, there are total 6 5 or 6 incidents of different different devotees life and today uh in first niskudanand swami describes us the uh, incident happened in the life of a uh, female devotee by the name of Shambai Shambai was a very much uh, I mean very strong devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan uh after listening many many kathas of bhagwan swami narayan from the santos she got too much devotion for bhagwan swami narayan as she gradually increase her devotion day by day and because of his devotion towards bhagwan swami narayan she gradually acquire such a higher position in our satsang not on uh, not i am talking about the higher position in the meaning of some administration or organization nothing else but these higher position that is only in spirituality meaning in her life she got a uh, day by day new new kinds of divine experience in her life and finally she acquire she got a uh, position of samadhi meaning whenever she desire to see bhagwan then she sat for meditation and in the meditation she immediately get darshan of bhagwan swami narayan this is what her uh, spiritual position and after some times as she got this samadhi uh, position of samadhi and that's why after some days as she practice too much times for meditation upon bhagwan swami narayan's divine form and only because of that she got all kinds of pleasure all kinds of uh, enjoyment and happiness from the bhagwan swami narayan's divine form in a meditation why because when she sat for meditation at that time she after after a minutes he immediately get uh, immediately went to in, uh, in aksardham there she got darshan of bhagwan swami narayan in his divine form in the aksardham as well as she had a chance to worship and have a darshan of all of those muktas who sat surrounding of bhagwan swami narayan in aksardham so what happened after some days after some days she even forget to eat forget to do any other task in her home even forget to do any other job or any activities and only sat for meditation throughout the day and after after the day when she came out from the meditation when she came out from maharaj meaning from aksardham to her body in this world in in real con- consciousness then at the time she tried to eat something and then that's why she had only little bit food why because she didn't do any work no job nothing else that's why 
and see it only a little bit and again as night falls she went to sleep in uh, and the next morning early morning she wake up again she sat for meditation and in meditation she directly reached at aksardham there he uh, there she got darshan of bhagwan swami narayan as well as the all of those muktas and then she enjoy this darshan of bhagwan and muktas and that's why she forget even to eat and drink but after many days pass in this way one day she she thought in her mind that now i am doing bhajan and meditation on the form of bhagwan swami narayan but what will be happen in nearest future why because i have no uh, such amount of food stuffs and vegetables and uh, groceries and everything in my home then what will be happen in near future after 2 or 3 days what will i eat now this little bit tension or worry uh, remain in her mind but she had no uh, no job nothing no any other activities nothing now she sat for meditation upon bhagwan swami narayan's divine form and as she again reach into aksardham she got a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan as well as all of those muktas she in the divine light she also engage in worship of bhagwan swami narayan in the aksardham after this meditation after this samadhi when she came back came out from the samadhi in her real consciousness at that time she got a different different kinds of foods in front of her in a new va- new vessels a new pots new plates new bowls everything new spoons everything was ready and not only that but all the sp- uh, pots and dishes and bowls everything that were filled with different different kinds of food now sitar bhagwan swami narayan himself provided me all these foods why because i have some tension for these foods and that's why bhagwan himself provided me these different different kinds of foods now she enjoy these different foods and after that again next morning she sat for meditation now she had no worry nothing else why because she had only one du- one duty one job and that is to only meditate upon bhagwan swami and his divine form why because she had free accommodation meaning free home she had no tension to pay mortgage or rent or nothing else now she had a tension for food but now bhagwan swami and himself provided her different different kinds of foods so now she had no worry no tension about food and that's why she didn't how to do any kind of job now she had only one thing to do and that is to do bhajan and meditation of bhagwan swami narayan so now she engage herself more and more time for meditation on bhagwan swami narayan's divine form now after some days as she ate this divine food given by bhagwan swami narayan through samadhi after that once upon a day as she got every day new and fresh food as bhagwan swami narayan himself provided her sham bhai she again she didn't have any desire in her mind still bhagwan swami narayan provided her some different different kinds of things like once upon a day bhagwan swami narayan himself gave her um his own footprints on her clothes to do puja just as we many times have darshan uh, of puja guru ji's puja in the puja of puja guru ji we have darshan of bhagwan swami narayan's uh, footprints in the same way this shambhai also 
ઘાટ ભગવાન સ્વામીની ડિવાઇન ફૂટપ્રિન્ટ ટુ ડુ પૂજા બટ ધીઝ ફૂટપ્રિન્ટ ઇઝ નોટ વેન ભગવાન સ્વામિનારાયણ એઝ અ હ્યુમન ફોર્મ ભગવાન સ્વામિનારાયણ ડીડ એન્ડ ગીવ ધીઝ ફૂટપ્રિન્ટ બટ ભગવાન સ્વામિનારાયણ વાઇલ સ્ટેઇંગ ઇન હિઝ ડિવાઇન અબોર અક્ષરધામ હી હિમ સેલ્ફ ડિવાઇનલી કેમ હિયર ઇન ધીઝ વર્લ્ડ ઇન ફ્રન્ટ ઓફ ધ શ્યામબાઇ એન્ડ ભગવાન હિમસેલ્ફ ગેવ હર હિઝ ઓન ફૂટપ્રિન્ટ ટુ ડુ પૂજા આફ્ટર ગિવિંગ ધીઝ ચરણારવિંદ મીનિંગ આફ્ટર ગિવિંગ ધીઝ ફૂટપ્રિન્ટ આફ્ટર મેની ડેઝ પાસ્ટ વન્સ અપોન અ ડે ભગવાન સ્વામિનારાયણ હિમસેલ્ફ અગેન કેમ ઇન ફ્રન્ટ ઓફ ધીઝ શ્યામબાઇ એન્ડ એઝ ભગવાન ગાર્ડ દેટ શ્યામબાઇ didn't have a uh, nice clothes that's why bhagwan himself gave her some new clothes so now shambai didn't have any thing to be worried about bhagwan himself gave her different different foods every day new foods fresh food now second thing clothes bhagwan himself gave her new clothes not only that but the another day Bhagwan himself gave her a uh, 40 pounds of flour and the shack of sakotso now these kinds of uh, food stuff and a uh, ready to eat sack after getting this stuff now shambai more and more engaged into worshiping of bhagwan swami nare why because she had no worry no thing to do that's why she engaged herself more in devotion after this incident niskuran swami describes the another incident happened in the life of another female devotee her name was jeevi bai all these devotees from vadodara jeevi bai had too much affection for bhagwan swami narayan and that's why whenever she did darshan of bhagwan's divine form she believe this is not a painting or this this is not a stone or metal idol but this is bhagwan himself and because of her devotion because of her affection for bhagwan bhagwan every time when she did darshan of bhagwan swami narayan in a mandir in in her home mandir then at the time bhagwan himself gave her divine darshan many times bhagwan himself gave her some divine things like some day bhagwan gave her some prasadi sometimes bhagwan gave her a flower garland many times a prasadi of sakar in this way bhagwan swami narayan himself gave her these divine things and when the other devotees and when the other people they saw these divine things then they thought how is this possible how these things before 5 minutes there were nothing and now this is something meaning a garland of flowers or some prasadi then they asked jeevi bai and jeevi bai explained them that bhagwan swami and himself come to me to give me his darshan and after giving darshan he also provide me this prasadi then all become surprised and all they all realize the real glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan now after some days bhagwan swami narayan again came in front of jeevi bai and bhagwan himself uh, asked for some food maharaj says I am really very hungry if you have any kinds of uh, ready to eat food then please give me and if you do not have anything to give me then I I will go to any other devotee's home and there I will then Jeevi Bai had only simple food in her home so she gave the, uh, her food to Bhagwan and Bhagwan lovingly eat why because bhagwan is not hungry for good food bhagwan is only hungry for food which is offered him 
by pure heart and jeevi bai she had too much affection for bhagwan swami narayan and that's why she offered even simple food with a full uh, with her heart full of devotion then bhagwan swami narayan himself ate lovingly all those food offered by jeevi bai to bhagwan Now as Jeeva understood that Maharaj is ready to eat my food he is ready to accept my devotion now the next day Jeeva herself decided to prepare something special food for Maharaj and that's why she prepared everything now the next day Bhagwan Swami himself come to came to her home and he asked again from jeevi bai please i am very hungry please give me some food then as jeevi bai understood maharaj's desire then she had already prepared many things to eat then she offer all those tables to maharaj and maharaj accept her devotion her affection and this time bhagwan swami narayan not give his darshan his divine darshan while he was eating not only to jeevi bai but all of the other people who were present at the time and when all of those people they they realized the darshan of bhagwan swami narayan then they all understood the real glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan now the next incident described by sadguru niskuran swami in the same chapter that was that was the incident that happened in her life of umaya bai she was also very much devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and the problem arise in her home why because only she was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan but not any other member of her family was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan that was the problem because this umaya bai always try herself to engage into worship of bhagwan swami narayan on the other hand total contrast the situation in her home why because her father her mother her husband nobody ready to accept her devotion for bhagwan swami narayan they all try to stop or even disturb to worshiping now what happened uh, once upon a day umaya bai desired to go to other devotees company because at the time there was no any mandir in uh, in the city and that's why uh, all the devotees gather in one devotee's home there they uh, there they uh, do bhajan and satsang just as the uh, devotees offer devotion in the mandir and they do satsang and katha varta in the mandir in the same way the devotees gather in one home one devotee's home and there they engage themselves into singing kirtans chanting bhagwan's dhun and doing katha listening katha in this way they engage themselves in the devotion then umaya bai also desired to go to uh, go with the other devotees but her family members they deny and they even locked in a room this umaya bai now for 3 days umaya bai didn't have uh, any food or water she had to do fast for 3 days now after 3 days bhagwan swami narayan himself appeared in front of umaya bai and this time bhagwan swami narayan not came there empty handed but bhagwan himself came there with a uh, different foods and bhagwan swami narayan this is a unique incident why because every time devotees offer some food or some tables to bhagwan this time bhagwan himself come with different foods for his devotees now umaya bai how darshan of bhagwan swami narayan in her room and as divinely came maharaj with the food so see her also a uh, divine food meaning divine prasad of bhagwan swami narayan there 
after this incident niskudan swami described the other another incident uh, that was also the uh, other female devotees in the same city of vadodara but uh, this is unique incident why because this is special because in this incident there was not a uh, adult devotee here there was a devotee female devotee and there uh, that devotee uh, that female devotee she had a uh, her daughter only 5 years old and as this female devotee she sat for meditation and for bhajan and worshiping to bhagwan swami and at that time her daughter her name was prembai she also sat with her mother for meditation and worshiping to bhagwan swami nare now what happened as her mother she got a uh, every day darshan of bhagwan swami nare in a meditation because in a meditation in samadhi they always went to akshardham and there she got a darshan of bhagwan swami nare and all of those muktas now this 5 year 5 years old her daughter prembai she didn't understood anything about bhagwan but as she tried to do meditation as she tried to do bhajan and worshiping to bhagwan swami narayan she also bhagwan also become very pleased upon her and as bhagwan become very pleased upon her then bhagwan himself gave her darshan in a meditation now nobody can see bhagwan but only prembai can see bhagwan's darshan now for pro, uh, for a proof or for uh, for evidence bhagwan swami narayan himself gave this prembai a uh, fresh flowers garland and also a wristband uh, made from different different flowers now after some times when the devotees so this garland and a wristband of a flower then they ask prembai how is this possible how you get these all these flowers and wristbands of flowers everything then prembai narrated the incident then as i said for meditation then bhagwan swami narayan himself gave me his divine darshan and he also Uh, he also gave me this flower garlands as well as this wristband made of flowers so all those people they after having after experiencing this incident they all become uh first they all become very much surprised and amazed and after that they all realize the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan and that's why they all become devotees of bhagwan swami narayan in this way niskudanand swami describe us uh, incident divine incidents happen in a life of some female devotee's life the other incident also written in the same chapter of 149 chapter of bhakta chintamani we will continue it later next sunday shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jai
प्रभु तव मुरति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो आमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो आमारी एह Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Guru- Guruji, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. <clears throat> there was a professor, and he had a class, a big class of students. And he wanted to demonstrate an example of something that we'll find out in the end. But what he did was he took this big, large, glass, transparent glass jar. And he had these big, big stones. And he started to fill the jar. After the jar was filled completely with those big stones, he asked the students... Is there any more space in this jar? At once, all those students replied no. Then, smirking, the teacher pulled out small pebbles from underneath his table. And while shaking that jar, he filled the pebbles up to the top of the jar. And then again asked his students, Is there any more space in this jar? The students this time didn't want to be fooled. So hesitantly, they said yes. So again with a smirk, the teacher pulled out sand from underneath his table and started to shake and pour until the sand was filled to the jar, to the top. And then again... The teacher asked, Is there any more space left? The students did not have an answer. They could think, What can possibly go more inside of this jar, which is already filled with big stones, small pebbles, and sand? And finally, he took out a jug of water and filled that whole jar until the water overflowed. He looked towards his students and said, Now the jar is full. Before it wasn't. But just think, if I had filled the jar with water first, instead of big stones or small pebbles or sand, then what would happen? There would be a lack of space. But because of my sequential order, due to my priority, prioritizing it was filled perfectly with the most amount of you can say matter inside of that jar meaning the teacher was showing efficiency but more than that the teacher was showing priority now what I want you to do is imagine the big stones to represent God and everything else to represent all your small tasks and duties in your life ranging from big to small whatever it is school social media or social life or any kind of other priorities such as satsang family hobbies jobs so on and so forth But the big stones, the biggest priority, I want you to imagine, is God Himself and His Ekantik Satpurush. Everything else, think of it as our small or big duties, such as getting good grades in school, 
that's definitely a task. That's definitely a duty. Not only that, but also going out with friends. That's social life. Of course, that needs to be done. Not only that, but attending family events, weddings, so on and so forth. These are all priorities in our life. But if I can ask you a question, we don't fill the water first, do we? How do we prioritize our life? Do we fill it with water first or do we fill it with big stones first? In the same manner, I think you got the example is that do we prioritize God and the Akantik Satpurush in our life first or other duties such as the ones that I just mentioned, do they come first and then God and the Akantik Satpurush come in as water, as such a small, small priority that maybe within one day there's maybe only half an hour given or even less than that towards them. This is something that we need to ask. Why? Because after all, we are in the satsang. In realizing that satsang is more valuable than any of these things, we'll be able to understand through various examples and a charitra of a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminar and how he prioritized God in his life over finance, over his, you can say, social life, over his, you can say, his life in general. His name was Kalyanbe, and he was from the village of Vantli in the district of Junagadh in Gujarat, India. Now, he was a very faithful devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and he always engaged in his devotion. But he had this very, very great inclination. You can see he had this hobby, if I can say, of bringing new people into satsang, meaning inviting others to join satsang to become the followers of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This was one of his, you can say, likings. This is what he did. So every year, he would hire new laborers. He had this big field. He was a farmer by occupation. And he would hire new, new laborers. And what he would do is that every year after he would hire their laborers, he would make them into satsangis. How so? He would talk to them regarding Bhagwan, but not only that, Kalyanbai was tactical. Kalyanbai used methods so that no one would run away from his, you can say, operation. What he would do is he would tell them that why don't you, instead of taking or finding grass for your cattle and your cows from long distances, why don't you take grass from my field? and use that and utilize that for your cow and cattle so they can eat that. From that nature, from that character, Kalyambi earned their trust. And after earning his trust, slowly but surely, he started to talk about Bhagwan in his life, in that person's life. And he completely changed the nature of that person by priori prioritizing God inside of his life. Then he would sit with them, he would also cut grass with them, speak to them about satsang. And then slowly but surely, they would become satsangis. Some he even made sadhus and sent to Junagar to become sadhus there. But one of his neighboring farmers, he was a Patel, and he pretty much completely knew Kalyanbai and wanted to stay away from him. He knew his tactics. He knew what he was doing. So he was a smart guy. This Patel, he was a smart guy by farmer. So Kalyambay spotted his neighbor and he decided in his mind that he, he wanted to make this person into a satsangi, no matter what happens. He decided that before anything happens, I want to make this before he even goes away or moves away, I want to make this Patel into a satsangi. He decided in, in his life, in his mind. So, obviously the Patel was also very smart, but Kalyambai was smarter. Kalyambai had God on his side. 
Kadiambe had tactics which were you can say very very legal in one way and also in the eyes of Bhagwan and also he was doing it in such a manner which was to please Bhagwan to make them into satsangis so Kalyambi approached this Patel and he said that I've got a crop of sugar sugar cane ready for you if we partner up we can sell it and we can make money that's what he said obviously the Patel was very aware of what he was trying to do so instantly he said no and then the Patel came home and told his wife about the proposal that Kalyambai said smirking and joking that this Kalyambai can you believe him our neighbor he came up finally to me and he said that I have sugarcane growing in my field let's sell it together as partners and make a profit can you believe this guy at first his wife did laugh with him but then thought about it that we can get a free meal and f we can get a free meal in our home if we just partner up with him we don't have to do anything we can get a profit we can feed our kids we can we can buy new things thinking in that manner Kalyambe, or the Patel's mind started to change and he said that you know it is a good idea obviously he was encouraged more on earning money so he said finally he came to Kalyanbe that day and he said I will partner with you but I will not be able to work with you because he knew what Kalyanbe did to the laborers so then Kalyanbe said okay no problem I completely understand but just to make sure that the crops are not spoiling just to make sure that I'm not cheating you I want you to come by once a day just to check on the sugar cane just to check if the crops are okay I want you to come once a day so the Patel said that's fairly that's good I mean that's a good idea I agree with it and I will come once a day so slowly but surely when the Patel would come to Kalyambai and see that how the crops are Kalyambai would slowly but surely talk about Bhagwan one or two sentences every day it accumulated every day Kalyanbe added one or more one or two more sentences more about God about Santos about the Mahima of Bhagwan the glory of God and slowly but surely as promised the Patel's mind completely changed and he he became a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminari now this was just a small charitra but we can see from this charitra that Kalyambe had a priority in life to make Bhagwan first to make Santos first by his talks obviously we see that through Kalyambe's life there was nothing else he did not want to earn money he did not want to get a profit he did not want to rule over 50 laborers so he can brag that he had people working under him all he wanted to do was to make others into satsangis moreover he wanted to talk about Bhagwan in Sadhguru Gunatyan Swami's Vato Swami says that there Bhagwan is the very idol or Bhagwan's Vato Bhagwan's Katha is Bhagwan's idol himself it's Bhagwan's Murti then we can say that Kalyambai definitely made Bhagwan something more in his life something that we can accept something that we can see then my question to you is that why can't we do this I'm not saying to talk about God I'm saying to make Bhagwan and the Akantik Satpurush a priority in life something where if we need to make a decision in life we first consult them if we need to ask them about some kind of d big decision we ask them if we need to if there's a problem in our life and we be, need to become honest we tell them wherever and whatever situation 
needed, we consult them, we look towards them. That's making God and his Ekantik Satpurush a priority in one's life. Not only that, but I can say that looking at some facts from history, I was researching and found that when Abraham Lincoln was the President of the United States, maybe more so over in the 1860s, he had the Secretary of Treasurer. His name was Solomon Portland Chase. Now he wrote, Chase wrote to the Director of the Mint, meaning the Director of the, um, the Mint is a printing press for money. That's where money gets printed, coins, dollar, dollars, anything. He wrote to him, his name was James Pollock, that Chase noted that no nation can be strong except in the strength of God, or safe except in his defense. The proved, the, the trust of our people in God should be declared on our national coins. This suggestion was approved through the appropriate channels in 1864 and a two cent coin was minted and inside or on the coin in the backside it says in God we trust you can probably look at your dollar bill or any dollar bill or you can look at any coins and see that each and every single currency form of the United States says it's imprinted that in God we trust. Now, if such a person can make God priority on such, you can say, a symbol such as money, which is, we can say, the most important or the most important thing in our life, then this is, this is a regular, this is not even a devotee. This is a person who is working for the cabinet of Abraham Lincoln in the 1860s. This is a person who has not met Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This is a person who has not met any kind of non santo or any santos or the devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This is a person who has not even heard the name of Bhagwan Swami Narayan even once. Such a person can say that let's put on our currency in God we trust. Such kind of priority such kind of faith we can see then how can we not prioritize our life why can we not make Bhagwan something more in our life nonetheless Michelangelo I'm sure most of you have heard of him he's renowned all over the world as a sculpture an artist a philosopher a poet an architect he had so many talents but more so over his talents what he did was he painted many many chapels and he painted many many areas and many portraits whatnot but at the end in his deathbed at the age of 89 he cited that i regret that i have not done enough for the salvation of my soul such a person developed an awareness at the end of his life he regrets that, I'm sure. But, at least he got this kind of notion before leaving his deathbed. Now, at uh, such a tender age right now of, I can say 15, 16, 17, 18, so on and so forth, why can't we make this notion and take it into our life as of right now? He said, I'm repeating, I regret that I have not done enough for the salvation of my soul. He regrets that. I'm reminded of a vat in Sadhguru Gunatyan Swami's vato. Swami says that even by spoiling 10 million tasks, improve your moksha. In case 10 million tasks are improved, but moksha is spoiled, what is achieved? Swami's vision, Swami's drashti, Swami's whole perspective was prioritized on attaining moksha, meaning how to become free from this life and attain God. That's why he said, 
that if 10 million you can say tasks tasks can be anything you can say even going to school is a task even you can say taking a test is a task even anything and everything can be a task Swami is not saying forget about everything but Swami is saying that if 10 million things if even by spoiling 10 million tasks if we can improve our afterlife then why not do it and that's when an example of Alexander the Great was introduced in my mind at the age of 18 these are the stats of Alexander the Great at the age of 18 he became the ruler of Macedonia at the age of 32 he passed away in that 13 year span he conquered more than 3,000 miles of land at such a tender age but on his deathbed Alexander said to his generals that he had three ultimate wishes one the best doctor should carry my coffin number one number two the wealth that he had accumulated meaning money gold precious stones coins everything should be scattered along the parade to my cemetery meaning the pathway where my coffin is being carried in that road all the money should be there and number three my hand should be loose and hanging outside of the coffin for everyone to see now one of his generals was surprised that he had made such kinds of wishes so he asked explain yourself we don't understand so he explained himself number one I want the best doctors to carry my coffin to demonstrate that in the face of death even the best doctors in the world have no power to heal in the face of death the best doctors in the world have no power to heal even he understood this fact number two I want the road to be covered with my treasure so that everybody sees that material wealth acquired on earth stays on earth everything and anything that we attain in this world will always stay here number three I want my hands to swing in the wind so that people understand that we come to this world empty-handed we leave this world empty-handed after the most precious treasure of all is exhausted and that is time time's up what are you gonna do just like how Michelangelo's time was up what did he do in the same way at the age of 32 Alexander the Great's time was up what could he have done he just stated three wishes that he had and through that a smart person an intelligent person whoever can read and understand this matter can right away pick up that I should make God a priority in my life over everything else so going back to my example the professor filled the jar with big stones small pebbles sand and finally water he did it in such an order so that everyone er, the whole jar became full but if he would have put the water first then there wouldn't have been enough space in the same exact manner the big stones again represents God all the other tasks such as or all the other small pebbles sand water represent all the other tasks that we have in the world of going to school of attending parties of attending anniversaries and attending family occasions of buying a new car anything and everything yes we have to do that we're householders no problem go ahead and do it but here's let me give you an example of how a person has made 
God a priority in their life. Suppose a person has a task of buying a new car. So he or she goes to their father and tells them that we want to buy a new car. Their father says, no problem, let's buy a new car. They get a new car, the devotee, or the, the, the person, the child, the kid. And the first thing that the person does is takes it to Mandir and has Santos Pujan of the car, has Takurji sit in the car to become holy. And then installs, you can say, a small idol or a photo of God inside of the car. And every time that person turns on the car, remembers Bhagwan before driving. That's making a priority to in satsang. That's making God a priority. Now, then it doesn't matter if the car is a Mercedes, a BMW, or a Toyota Corolla. That's not the factor. The factor is making God a priority. Let me give you another example. <clears throat> Suppose that there's many, many kids that study for exams and particularly MCATs. MCATs are taken to become or get into, you can say, a med medical school. Now there's books, thick books that are needed to study. Now I remember one child, uh, one person bringing these books to Santos and saying that could you please put it at the feet of Bhagwan so I can be graced by his blessing so I can get a good exam on the MCATs this is making God a priority you don't have to do much you just have to add God in each and every activity that you do another example when you go outside and you buy something you bring it home and you make food you make such kind of food, consuming it directly, that's not making God a priority. But after filling it in, a, in its separate sections of bowls, you offer it to Bhagwan, you offer it in your siyasan, that's making God a priority. In the same exact manner, we can say that in each and every activity, in each and every task that we do, if we remember Bhagwan and add these elements, then yes, you have put those big stones first and you are putting the small pebbles, sand and water after making your life more and more, you can say, God profound. In the end, we have to do this, so then why not start today? If Michelangelo understood at the end of his life and if Alexander the Great conquered the world and and understood it at the end of his life then why can't we wake up and understand it right now since we still have a tender time a tender age you can say to understand Bhagwan. saying this my humble Jai Swaminarayan